first couple of words about myself. I used to be an entrepreneur. I uh, uh, founded two web startups, and uh, when I quit my last startup, I started to be a lean startup practitioner first and consultant. And today, I call myself a lean innovation consultant because I'm. Um, some of my customers are corporates, and they don't like uh, to be consulted on lean startup things because startup is not really cool for them. They're not, at least that's what they think. Um, and today I'd love to show you a method that I believe every one of you can use if you are running a startup because one of the most important things about a lean startup is that you focus. Uh, the focus is, if, if you know what you want to focus on, only then you are able to be lean because if you don't focus, you, you, you waste your scarce resources on all the things that don't matter. Uh, first, I'd love to know uh, how many of people here, please, if you could put up your hands up, have uh, an impact on the, way, on, on the product that they are working at. So in, in your company, how many of you have an impact on what the product is like, uh, on the prioritization of the features, on... Okay, okay, cool. So, like, almost half of you. Um, I, guess, I guess you'll find this talk more important. Now, of those guys who are, uh, who are uh, having an impact on the, on the product, what are the ways that you are prioritizing the features? What, how do you know what to focus on? Any, just... Customer customers? Customer. So, customer what customers wants the most? So you ask the customer, right? So, so, for example, you, you, you get customer requests, right, for features. Yeah. And, and then you just start acting on them once you get 20, re, uh, 20 requests, right, or something like that. Or, you, or you maybe you ask customers, like, we have this 10 feature ideas. What do you think about, about doing that, right? So that's, that's the, the thing you could do, and it's actually been preached for a long time that that's the right thing to do. I, re, I, th I really think it's really uh, not the right thing to do. And I'm going to uh, tell you why. Um, the thing is, one of the most important things when you think about your solution, your product, your service, today actually you don't talk only about this product or service, you talk about the whole business model. So when you think about what is your business model, uh, you think about the solution to a certain problem. Now, when you ask customers what kind of feature they want, you're asking customers about what kind of solution do you want, and customers don't know the solution. I mean, you know Henry Ford, who, who would have asked, right? You know, the, 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 what would have customers wanted? I mean, almost everyone knows it. They would have they would wanted, like, a huge amount of horses, uh, right, instead of a car, right? So customers normally don't know the solution, even, they, even though they ask for it. But what you, what you really want to know, if customers ask for a solution, that's actually good, because obviously they find your, uh, they find your service interesting enough, and they, they actually get something out of it, uh, otherwise they wouldn't ask for, for, for a certain kind of solution. What you want to understand is you want to s understand the problem. They, these customers seem to have a certain problem that they cannot solve right now with your solution. And what is the problem? And that's actually a topic that Etienne has been talking in, in the end of, uh, of his presentation. Which I'm, so, and I hope that after my talk today you will have at least one method of thinking about how can I find the problem, how can I define the problem of a customer. Now, um, many of you may know the design thinking approach, and with, when you when you think about design thinking, it's uh, the first phases of it is observing the customer. So there is a lot of techniques that you can find in design thinking about how to observe and qualitatively understand what your customer what what, what your customer needs are, like fly on the wall. Maybe you 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 follow them the whole day. There are certain different techniques that you can know, and they are all qualitatively. Outcome-based uh, outcome approach is, is a quantitative approach, which, uh, which I maybe as a physicist for <laughs> I like more because, of, because it is quantitative. And uh, I believe it's a, it's a structured approach and it can help you not only understand their needs but as well focus on the right features once your product is out there. And to understand now, now, now we have 100 ideas of what, what we can, where we can go. Now, you all, I guess, know that a good product is not, or a perfect product is not a product that, that you cannot add any more to, but a product that you cannot uh, take anything away from, right? So you don't want to have 100 features in your product. You want to have 10 features, but that really matter. Now, 
to understand the outcomes, you first have to understand the, the jobs to be done thinking. Now, how many of you are familiar with the jobs to be done? OK, so I'll, I'll explain that more, more deeply. Uh, now, the idea, and that's, that's actually the whole idea of, of um, uh, beh behind focusing on, on what customers really need, is um, the, it's, it's, it's an idea put forward by Clay Christensen. I have, I have a small link here. It's um, the idea that we always buy a certain product or a certain service because we hire them to do a certain job for us. For example, I buy coffee to get a to get a, 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 a like like a, to get more energy for some for a task that is coming up, or I um, I buy an iPhone because I want to call people. I want to look for my emails. There's a lot of different things I can do with it. A lot of different jobs that can do for me, and if we if whenever we build something new, whenever we build anything uh, that people actually will go to, are going to use, our product or our service is going to replace something that is already doing this job for a person. So there is no new jobs that you can create. People are, has, have been existing for a very long time, and it's just that your product, your service might be much, much better than an existing solution at delivering on the same job. And you need to understand what kind of job is it. Uh, I, I, there is a good way to explain uh, how important this is to your product by, by looking at these two products, like Snickers and Milky Way. Looking at those two things, like you, you might think, well, that's very similar products, right? I mean, they're, they're, their ingredients are actually quite similar. I guess so 80% it's the same. And you might think, if you, if you were the product manager of Snickers and you knew Milky Way is running much, much better, and you, you, you would think, okay, what, what, is, what, is, what is the thing that they are doing right? I, I will try to, to do that as well. But, but that would be a terrible idea. Because if you, if you do understand what the job is Snickers does and, and Milky Way does, you will see that. Now, the Milky Way is, uh, what, what, what customer research found out, is, is something that people buy because they want to, uh, they want to give, uh, give themselves a gift. Like they, they want to uh, uh, reward themselves for a certain event that just happened before. So something, I, I did a great test, I got, got a great mark, I go and, and get a Milky Way. Let's just simplify it. When it comes to Snickers, a totally different story. Snickers people used to buy when they know there is something coming up and they're not going to be able to eat something before that and they need some energy. Now that's a really different things that, you, that, that customers think about. If you, if, if, so when you understand that, you understand that it's totally different what you need to do to, have a, uh, to, to improve sales on Snickers or the product Snickers than the product Milky Way. And it's exactly the same thing with your, any online business. So that, I hope that that helps you to understand why it's so important to really look at the, at the whole thing from, from customer's point of view. And the outcomes are the deeper level of the jobs. It's not just the job that, that your customers want to be done. It's, it's the, the how your customers value the job. So what, what are the attributes of the how the job is being done that your customers value? An example from a razor. A razor, I want the razor to minimize the probability that it injures me when I, when I shave. I want a razor, I want to maximize the amount of time I can reuse the blade. I want to um, minimize the amount of time I have to reblade at the same, the same part of my face so it is blade the, the right way. What, what, uh, um, what I mean, the, the first, I, I, I need to say it and I'll, I'll attribute uh, to his book in the end. The outcome-based approach is put forward by, by Anthony Ulrich from the company Strategen, and is, there is a book that, uh, that, that you'll see in the end. It's called What Customers Want. And uh, all, all, almost everything that I'm going to talk about today is uh, you, you can find there in much more detail. And uh, uh, what they found when doing research, they found that actually the simplest products have at least 50 to 150 different outcomes. The customers, without conscious knowing, value. And, every, and, and what they did as well was not just saying, OK, there is an outcome, and what is the customer need? I mean, how do you know, how do you actually phrase the customer need? If you talk to different um, departments or different businesses, there is, there is, very, uh, there is a huge un uncertainty about what is a need, what is a requirement, what is a, what is a, uh, what is a job. I mean, there is, people will tell you all kinds of things 
uh, th that these are needs. But customers, so, so um, there is a very specific way to capture an outcome that allows you to for a quantitative um, analysis. And this way is, is to have a direction first, like something to minimize. Then you have a metrics that actually customer maybe don't tell you, but they actually really value this metrics and the content of the outcome. So in this way, uh, minimizing, this is the direction, the probability, that's the metrics, and the injury that I, when I shave, uh, uh, of an injury when I shave my beard is the content. Um, and uh, there is a way to analyze um, which outcome is the most important one. And uh, I won't, uh, I, I could talk to you about all kind, of, uh, all kind of mathematics now, but I would like to just do it with you right now. Because I guess most of you have been using Google, right, for search. So let's, let's um, so what I need from you now is a little and fast collaboration. So I want you to first uh, read the first outcome, right? Maximize the probability to find the needed website on the first search request. So uh, I want every one of you to put the hands up first, like, like a, full, a full hand without showing any fingers, and think of a number between one and five for one being this is not important at all, and, what, and five being this is very important to me, and uh, once you know it, show, to, 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 show it, to show it up. Please do it now, and I will count. Okay, one, two. Okay, that's that's hard. I need I, I need I need some help counting at least at least uh, there. Uh, Etienne, could you could you count on, on this side and then just tell me please? Thank you. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, one, <coughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, ah, uh, yeah, sorry, I, I, didn't, I didn't tell you what to count, right? That, that's, a, that's a bad idea. So what we count is, I'm <laughs> sorry, please put your hands up, please. Uh, I'm, I'm, we're counting only, only hands with four or five fingers. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, so I got 37 here, of which 40. And how many hands did you have? Did, 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 were, were there any, any hands without, without a five? I don't yeah. think so. <laughs> yes, there was one okay, here, I guess. There's two. Okay, so, I, so we had 51. So we had 51 with a four or five. And we had, I believe, 55 hands. In, so we, we had 55 non-hands, non which is quite high. Okay, now how many of you are satisfied with Google on a scale to one to five uh, with how, how, how you are able to maximize the probability to find the needed website on the first search request? How many of you are satisfied with it? Where well, one is non satisfied at all and five is very satisfied. Wow, wow, 11. How many have do you have? 11, wow, this is, I have 11, so it's uh, 17, and we, let's say we, we are still 55. That's, wow, that's a lot. That's not really satisfying, I'll tell you. Um, now, for the second, for, for, I, I hope we, we will be faster for the second outcome. So, the second outcome is minimize the time needed to load search results. For whom, uh, for, uh, please hold your hand up with a, uh, with how important it is for you. Once again, with four or five. Okay, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ten, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, um, yeah? Eight out of fourteen. So we have 40 people participating. I had 16, so it's 24. Okay, and uh, now, how uh, please, how satisfied are you with the, your ability to minimize the, ti uh, the time needed to load the search results with Google? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. 
11 out of 14. I have 32, I believe, and 27 out of uh, 38. 38 out of, uh, oh gosh, uh, I believe 42 or something. OK, so it's much, much, much higher satisfaction, OK? And let's do it with with with, uh, with three. It's, it's the first time I'm trying it uh, live, right? So normally you 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 have digital tools to do that, but let's let's uh, try it for the. Th so we have only three outcomes. This, don't, don't worry, it's going to be more interesting now in a moment. So minimize the probability that that the search result description is misleading. So how important is it to you that the search result description that you find this one here is misleading? How, how important is it to you that, it is, that you minimize the pro that, that, that Google can minimize the probability that this is misleading to you? Did everyone understand the question? Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, twenty. Thirty-one, and I had two. Oh, I'll, I'll just. Yeah. Okay, and uh, how satisfied are you with the with your ability to minimize the probability that this uh, re uh, search result description is misleading? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Wow, wow. Um, and how many? Okay. So we have, we have, so what would happen now is, okay, let's, let's look at the score. I mean, I, I, I mean what, what we see here, we, we see, like, say, can anyone help me? Do you have a calculator or something to get me the percentage? Can anyone calculate the percentage? Yeah, I will, I mean, this is almost like something like 90%, right? And this here seems to be something like around 30%. This seems to be 60%, right? And this seems to be 90% uh, once again, right? And this is uh, something around uh, 43 or 47 is 90%. And this is 21 or 47 is 45% or something, right? So what would happen now is, uh, so wh wh why was this important? Uh, I, I just wanted to show you that, that within, within a couple of minutes, you can understand what is important for Google as a product. And we can actually make some suggestions what Google should work on and what they shouldn't. Uh, now, the importance of a product, you, you multiply with, with, with two, because you want to work uh, on, a, on a product uh, that is very important to people, and you want to uh, you, you want to subtract the, the how satisfied people are today with it. So, and you, you can multiply it with 10, it doesn't matter. I mean, I could multiply 2 with 90%, and, but they multiply it with, 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 with 10 just to get better, better numbers. So we would have a score here of 15, which is quite high. Uh, here we would have uh, 12 minus 9, which is 3, and... Uh, we would have here 18 minus uh, 4.5, which would be 13.5. Now, when you are now, now you imagine you're working at Google and you have this result, and they are much better made than, than just w with one such an or, uh, audience uh, because you you have a mold, you have a diversified your your um, uh, your crowd with which, uh, which you are asking. Now, imagine what feature would you concentrate most on? Knowing, knowing this data, uh, which feature would you concentrate most on improving? Anyone? An idea? On two. So the feature with the highest satisfaction and the least importance for your customer. I mean, it's, it's, it's number one, right? It's the most important one with the least satisfaction, right? So this is this. Just, this score just gives you. So the highest score, the better it is, and 
Now, knowing that you, get, you, you have 50 to 150 outcomes, I just, I just calculated a couple, uh, I just took some that were obvious to me, some outcomes that were obvious to me about, about Google. And if you have, uh, uh, wait a sec, somehow, ah, yeah. uh, if, if you have 150 or 50 outcomes, what you're looking for is, is then a real, a real, this is a real data set that, that helps you to understand what actually is important to your customer and what isn't. Now imagine you would have this kind of results. I mean, uh, yeah, divide that by, by 10 once again, right? So you, you have, normally you would expect features that are least important to be less satisfied because you wouldn't put energy into them, right? Why would you put energy into something that, that is not important to your customer? The more important something is, the higher satisfaction should be. So these features that you can see uh, uh, marked red here are definitely opportunities for improvement. Those are definitely the opportunities that, that if you focus on them, you are really able to offer your client something that is, that is not normal, that, that they don't get today. Now, this is when you think of your product in the first place, right? But when you are running, you can, you, or for example, you have a website, you can ask randomly your customers on one or two outcomes that you know that you are focusing on normally with your development. And you can ask them these two questions all the time. And you can have stats every week. And every time you, feature, you, 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 you put out a feature that you think will improve one of the outcomes, you can measure it, right? That, that gives you a real possibility to understand what, what, was, what is really needed. And we are only, only that's very important, because in Lean Startup, you very often hear, yeah, shouldn't do market research. I mean, no one really does that. It says that even, even Steve Blank has some market research uh, on, on his website uh, saying, you know, these tools you should do for market research. But everyone is saying you should never ask your customer, like, what, what would you do if, or would you buy this, or do you like this feature or not? This is, this is the kind of questions you, don't, you, you, you shouldn't ask. Or because, because you cannot, people are really bad at, at, at predicting their own behavior. I mean, we are all really bad. Because when you ask us, is, is this a great product? Yeah, it's great. Would you buy it? Yeah, once you've done it, yeah, I'll buy it. But then it's, oh, yeah, but one euro? Really? You, you really think I'm going to? Just, just, just when you have to pay, it's a really different thing. Uh, like I told you, uh, if you want to know more, there is the book about it. It's great. Um, it shows you what you can really, uh, what you can really get by understanding the outcomes from your customers. It's more. It goes more deeper into how you do that, especially in the method of um, how do you actually come up with 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 the outcomes in first place. Because I, I just showed you three outcomes that were kind of obvious in, with Google, but I can I can assure you there is more than fifty of those. And uh, I mean, the basic. Uh, basically, I can I can tell you it's it's just it's, it's chronologically going through the customer experience and and uh, is, is a qualitatively market market interview that, that you where, where you ask your customer. So tell me what are you doing first, then what are you doing then, and what are and focusing on what is important to you at each step, and um, yeah. So that's that's a little about me, and. Um, I would, uh, yeah, I w I'm, I'm looking forward to your questions. There is a lot, I guess. I hope there is some something to ask. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Anton. Ah, oh, there. Yeah. Uh, very inspiring. Thanks a lot. Um, still, I want to, I want to kind of challenge you here and say, sure. Bob, you you quoted Henry Ford at the beginning, right? Right. And said, well, customers don't know what they want, and yet you told us we should ask them. And basically, the question is also, do we know what they want, and, and do we ask the right questions? Now, like I said, I, I mean, what customers don't don't know is um, what the, what customers don't know is the solution, but what customers do know is their problem. And all of the questions we are what, so the both questions that I asked you were. Are you, how important is it for you to solve a certain problem? And how satisfied are you with how you're doing it right now? There was no question asked for any prediction of your own behavior or anything, would you like something? It's just in the presence, like right now, what, ab what about you? How do you value this and how do you value that? That's really a different thing. And I'm not asking for the solution. That's very important. This, this, this is, 
like I believe this concept of dividing the problem and solution is the key thing to understanding product. But don't you think if the customer doesn't know their behavior and they can't see what they're doing, they can't anticipate their behavior? They can't anticipate their behavior, right. The customer is not going, know, know, is not going to know the problem. So what you do in the first place, for example, let's, let's keep Google, right? So you take, uh, imagine you haven't used Google, you, you haven't ever used Google, so you're, no, you're totally clueless about what kind of outcomes may be there. Uh, uh, so you go to first person that you know who is using Google, and you're saying, okay, so please tell me, uh, so you use Google, wh why do you do that? I mean, what is, what is, what are, what are you doing with it? And then you go uh, through the whole experience and you, you uh, ask questions on what the customer values. And when you hear any, any statement, for example, yeah, and then it takes me so long, so, so long, the site so long to, to load, you rephrase it. And you, you rephrase it in the way that, uh, that, that an outcome, uh, in a way of the outcome. So you say, oh, it, is, it, it takes long to load. So is it important for you to minimize the time, the load time of the page when you search? And, and if, if, if they say yes, then that is validated. Now you take the outcome. And you don't need to be careful about taking an outcome that is not important or maybe misunderstanding. Because if you take an outcome that is not important, you will afterwards find that it is, that it is one of those outcomes not important and not satisfied. Because, so don't, don't, don't be afraid of, of putting an outcome out there which is not important. But after the quantify, uh, when, you, when you do this quantitatively, this will automatically filter out anything that doesn't, doesn't matter to the customer. And you're not asking, once again, you're not asking, I mean, ha, did you have any difficulties with answering these questions? I mean, I guess I understand that these questions were not perfectly put, right? Because you need to understand, oh, this is the outcome, how, how am I satisfied? But once you understood the question, was it difficult to ask it? Did you have to think about, oh, yeah, well, what if I'll do that? Was it like that? I mean, most of you participated, right? So you were able to, to actually put a, put, put, put a number to it, right? But in this sense, you're, still, you're basically helping the customer know his problem and provide him the solution, which is a good thing. I mean, we're not talking with the customer about his solution. When I asked you, I didn't tell you, like, the solution is you go to a guy and actually ask him. He will not have a little time. To, to show this, so maybe it's yeah. like, are those the right, the right questions? And you said that it might be 150 questions or so you do. So this is a different kind of research, if I understood you, you correctly, mm -hmm. to find out are those the most pressing things, but then how to rank them. So that's actually what I, what I answered. Sorry, there was another. And um, more questions. There's another question. So if this is not a replacing product, uh, but a new product, will this metric still be valid, or how do you do it? Yeah, that's that's the thing. Uh, that's maybe something I'd, uh, I spoke about in the beginning. Uh, every product is a replacing product in the eyes of the customer, <coughs> because you will not find any job that customer will be willing to pay for that they are not having right now. They're just dealing with this job in a different way. Take Facebook. You were able to keep uh, in contact with your friends before Facebook. It just it's it's just much more it's much much greater hassle. You were able to do everything you can do with all the digital products today, before. It, it's it's just much more convenient or fast or whatever. There is something about this 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 job that you are th 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 that you still have that is improved. Your product is maybe new a new category, but the job your product is doing for your customer has been been there before. Is that more, more questions? So it's maybe like Etienne's example of um, Excel being a replacement for many startups. So you never say that Excel is a competitor. This may be yeah. an analogy. Yeah. So show hands, more questions. So this was a practical exercise for now, I think. OK, oh, there's a question in the back. Uh, hopefully I can articulate it correctly. Um, <clears throat> the no prototype free question questioning of customers. I didn't hear the beginning of the presentation, unfortunately, but uh, I think it's an extremely good point. Um, what if you have a situation where you would like to present a product and you can't afford the prototype? Say, for example, you've got a, a hypothetical situation where you can only really explain that this is what we plan to do, 
um, but we can't really present you a prototype unless you back the concepts. Is that too risky? Should you even go down that path? I mean, <laughs> the, good, the, the question is, what are you going to do with the results of questioning people? I mean, if, you, if you're going to there, you can ask this question. I mean, you, so, so now we've been talking about your problems, problems with Google. Now imagine we make a much better search engine that will do all the things much better. What is the, would you pay for it? I mean, what would you do with, with your answer to this question? Do you think you can rely on, a, such a, on, a, on an answer of a customer to a product that he doesn't really see? I mean, that's, I, I wouldn't rely on that because I know, for example, in Germany, you know, 70% of people say that they are very much in favor of, uh, of, an, uh, of, of uh, environmental friendly energy, but only 6 to 7%, like a tenth of them, is actually paying for it. So people are really, really, really bad at predicting their own behavior, especially when it comes to, uh, to, to, give, to, to spending money. And by the way, I don't think that is, that is impossible to have a prototype. I mean, you, uh, I mean, with 3D printers today, or I mean, you can make a paper prototype uh, of a website. You can make you can make a prototype. You, I mean, if you, if you are talking about websites, which is mostly very simple to make a prototype there, but if you're talking about hardware products, you can you can make them out of out of anything. I mean, th there I don't think today there is any anyone who can say I cannot make a prototype. Even if you, I mean, you really have to abstract to what is the interface your customer is facing. Maybe sometimes you have very complicated technology behind it, but then you concierge everything. You just show, okay, now imagine uh, I have very, very complicated uh, technology behind. That's the first thing you see, and then magically this is the second thing you see. Now what would you do? That's already much, much better than just talking about it because your customer can actually touch something, and then he can say, oh, you know what? When I see the results, I, I actually that's not what I want, was looking for. And, so, and um, yeah, Holger, and your... You, 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 Non-functional you, prototypes are maybe an option, so yeah. But interesting to see, like, to challenge this, like, does it actually work? Maybe we should, like, at the next meetup or so, all make a prototype in one evening or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's a great yeah. idea. More questions? Yeah. So, uh, uh, have you seen a company where it's implemented already, uh, this kind of um, tools? Yeah. Um, and what is, if it's implemented, how uh, how uh, effective it is, is it? And also, like, it's more about the number of companies who are implementing implementing this right now. I mean, I, I don't have any stats on, on that. I mean, it's pretty 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 new. I, I know this company, Stratagen, of the guy who wrote the book. I mean, this book is basically him, obviously, advertising as well for the approach, which I find great, great way to make to to, to, to do business. And uh, uh, they are serving a lot of customers. When you read the book, you will see a lot of examples. I don't think, I don't, th in Germany, in my, in, to my experience, I haven't met anyone in the corporate world who was aware of that. I mean, n normally, I, I, my, ex my personal experience is that, that, that everyone is making the same mistakes, whether you take the, the, the young entrepreneur who's 20 and, not, and, and uh, uh, just got out of the school, or the CEO. Both are, they have an idea, they really love it, they develop the vision, and they are all about the product, where the vision, and, and implementing it, and they jump into implementation right, right, right there. It's, it's, and, and it hurts much more when you're in a corporate world because that means millions of euros being spent. And almost no one is actually questioning, what is the customer actually looking for? I mean, your idea is great, sounds great, but, yeah. Okay, so any more questions? No? Okay, so then give Anton a hand. Yeah. Thanks for the presentation.